Revelations 13, 11 through 18. The beast from the earth. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and live. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, you all. I am your humbled host, Myra B. King, a follower of Jesus Christ. This is a Christian media platform, a Christian podcast, and I thank you all for tuning in. Today, we have an interesting show lined up for you all. I have uh, tons of informational clips of things that's going on around the world that we should be aware of. I also have a couple topics that we're going to dive into that we're going to discuss just to shed light. And again, I'm doing all this to shed light on how dark the world is and how the world is evolving, how the world is changing. And it's time that we continue to follow the Lord. And if you aren't following the Lord, It'll be a good time to get saved, to download a Bible app, to purchase a Bible. I have the New King James uh, Version Bible. And to start reading the Bible, listening to it, meditating on it, praying to the Lord Jesus Christ that he reveals himself to you. You know, praying that he allowed the Holy Spirit to guide and protect you. Now is that time to do that, you all. Time is running out. No man knows the day or the hour. But... We don't know if tomorrow, we don't know who will wake up tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to us. And tomorrow, if I were to not make it in this life, I would want to wake up in heaven. I would want to wake up in front of that throne saying, job well done, my holy servant. And getting and getting that ticket into heaven. You know, I wouldn't want to burn any, an eternal fire. And... Um, that's a crucial way to go out. Just turn on your turn on your stovetop. Put your hand over the fire. Press it down over it. That is hell. Hell is worse than that. It's torture. Gnashing of teeth. The Bible describes it. Look it up, guys. Do your own research. And uh, it's just time to get saved. Time for us to time for us to do a little bit better. Um, so much killing and darkness and evilness running around in the world. For example. We are heading into a new world. I don't know if you all uh, know that or not, but they are laying foundations for a new system, okay? A new system, a new digital system, and it's going to be ran by AI, okay? And that's it. So I have a couple topics that I want you all to, that I'm going to read, and uh, I have clips that we're going to look at, that we're going to discuss. But this is all for you all to do your own research. Some of these topics, I'll just give bullet points. And again, it's just a little nugget just so you all can go ahead and look up this stuff on your own. Now, uh, first off, my thoughts and prayers go out to um, 
anyone who's been affected by this um this crazy weather that we're having uh floods uh humidity i believe out in india they reached 140 degrees and streets were melting uh tornadoes uh flooding uh just anyone who's affected by it uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to you all and uh we should be thankful uh, for the ones who no, who are not affected by the weather, who do have air conditioner, who do have a shelter, a roof over the head, uh, we should thank the Lord for that because our situation could be uh, much worse. So without further ado, we're going to jump into the show. This is not to, you know, cause panic. I just want to let you guys know that there's a fault line that is being opened close to Utah and Wyoming that's actually right next to Yellowstone, Yellowstone Volcano. Now, Yellowstone Volcano, if that volcano erupts, about 75 to 85 percent of U.S. population is going to be destroyed. OK, I mean, Midwest wiped out. West Coast wiped out. Half of down south in uh, Texas, gone. Louisiana, gone. <laughs> you know, close to Tennessee and Memphis hit. Now, the only places that could be safe for y'all to travel to once this volcano erupts is southeast, like Florida here in Atlanta, some places in South Carolina and all the other coasts. All right. Now, anybody that is not on the east side, they're going to get hit by the volcano directly. And then you have acid rain. That's crazy. Starting to get going down here. We are right across the street from Bush Stadium off 8th Street, really right below Highway 40 or I-64 behind us, you can see some military vehicles and military members starting to arrive and get ready to go for this exercise. The drills start today. Really, this is more of a prep day. And then they run through Wednesday. The downtown area will be even busier than usual with this large scale training taking place. Bob Marino, Automotive Group Sky Fox can show you the scene over us live right now. Again, we're in this parking lot just south of Bush Stadium vehicles just starting to arrive as things start to amp up here for this training. We can also show you some video. Like me, you've been watching what has been going on in St. Louis. If you live in the Midwest area, this is something that you want to pay attention to. The National Guard has been running drills in St. Louis and along the Mississippi River, allegedly practicing exercises um, in case of the 8.4 earthquake. Well, something called the Midriff Fault Line, and it, it goes along through Nashville, St. Louis, Memphis, um, I believe Chicago, Indiana, and they are suspecting a um, large earthquake to take place. And if this happens, it will split, um, it will split open the land. Um, a massive earthquake will happen, collapse of um, Flooding and um, with ocean water can happen to these different states. Dramatic video. It shows a sinkhole opening up on a soccer field in Illinois. Take a look. You can start to see the ground giving way. Ooh. An entire light pole gets uh, disappears oh basically goodness. into the earth. Thankfully, nobody was on the field at the time. Officials say the sinkhole is approximately 100 feet wide, 30 feet deep. They say it was the result of an underground. If you're a guy between 18 and 26, you have got to listen to this. Let me start by saying, y'all know that I don't make back-to-back -back posts on social media, so obviously it's something important. If you've already read what's behind me, then yes, that's correct. House passes the fence bill automatically registering men 18 to 26 for a draft. They put it in the annual defense spending bill because they knew it would be passed that way. The same thing they did with the TikTok ban. The way our Congress moves is very, very, very shady. You can see that right here. Pause if you want to read it. And they say while it hasn't been invoked in half a century, it's mandatory for all U.S. citizens to register for a selected service, also known as military draft. When they turn 18, failure to register is a classified felony and comes with a host of legal challenges. 
This is very, very, very problematic with what's happening in the world right now. You have got to be kidding me. Let me say something right now. Take this to the bank, okay? That person was allowed to scale that roof, okay? I am not some individual who's trying to assess situation and have never been around the president of the United States. While Trump was in office, okay, I have, was around him a lot, a lot. And let me tell you something. The Secret Service, there is no person that can get around the perimeter of the Secret Service where, where Donald Trump is without them be being aware of it. I am not kidding when I say that my husband once almost got shot by the Secret Service because he came down a staircase. I was speaking at the NRA, NRA and he snaked in and came down. And they didn't know who he was. And they were like, freeze, 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 freeze. Like, we will shoot you right now. So you're telling me that guy walked up and was trying to get the attention. The Secret Service saw him and he's pointing and he's saying, this guy's got a gun. This guy's got a gun. And they're pretending they don't know what's going on. I mean, am, am I crazy? Do you guys actually believe this was a failure in intelligence? All of these Secret Service agents crawling around and you don't think just what that guy said, said that is common sense, okay? They're trying to now tell us that common sense is a conspiracy. That is the new thing that they're trying to sell the public. Common sense is a conspiracy. You're telling me this guy was able to walk up with a rifle in his hand and scale a roof and you don't think the Secret Service... And let me tell you, they get there days before. Let me tell you how a security apparatus is supposed to run. Days before, they get in and they look at every possible angle in which somebody could hurt the president, okay? And I'm not even talking about once you get to the Secret Service. I'm talking about if you just have security in general. Before you speak, they will go, hey, this is the stage? Okay, let me tell you, that right there is a problem. They'll mark that as a spot. That right there is a problem. That part, we need to know who this person is. They'll knock on doors. Okay. They got to figure out every possible angle that any individual could potentially get on a roof because you know what? This has happened in the past. People have been shot from roofs. People have been shot from windows. There was a 0% chance that some random person with a rifle was able to scale a roof uh, unless there was just an unbelievable failure in intelligence. And you want to know why it's unbelievable? Because I don't have to believe it. I don't believe it. I want the names of the Secret Service agents that allowed this remarkable security failure to go down. Because I don't, I don't believe this. I'm done with this. I don't believe this, not for one second. Having been around the president, having literally almost watched my husband get shot because he came down the wrong set of stairs at the NRA, screaming at him, screaming at him. And I'm literally, I jump in front of someone like, don't shoot him, that's my husband. And you're telling me they, this, they knew he was gonna speak and they weren't worried about the roofs, a roof with an angle to shoot the president. This guy says 50 yards away, he watched this. And this wasn't like he scaled it silently, that guy, Okay, everyone, this is a big deal. I'm gonna explain it to you, so stick with me. Don't go anywhere. There's a lot going on with this. Women could be registered or required to register for the draft. You heard that right. The United States House of Representatives took this up and it was voted overwhelmingly by Republicans. They're the ones that supported it for the most part. When a woman turns 18, if this legislation goes through, they would be required to register for the draft. Also, it would mandate that men and women at the age of 18 would automatically be registered for the draft. Breaking news tonight, CBS News is confirming that the FDA has found evidence of the bird flu virus in grocery store milk, but expressed confidence that there is no threat to human health. The government agency said tests are being conducted to determine how well pasteurization works to reduce the risk of infection. Have you guys seen this yet? This was just posted two hours ago. It says, here's how St. Louis area first responders are preparing for a New Madrid earthquake. More than 500 federal local first responders, 500, over 500, that is a big number. It says, we'll be in St. Louis region Monday through Wednesday to practice their response to a magnitude 8.4 earthquake across the New Madrid fault. 
members of the Missouri National Guard, military, and local law enforcement agencies will practice search and rescue for a planned emergency response drill. Now here's the crazy thing because I keep telling y'all they keep telling us these things in movies but people talking about oh no it's just for entertainment purposes only. Well the new Continental Split movie that I showed y'all a couple weeks ago is literally talking about the new Madrid fault line. Look. To be original movie that dramatizes the potential for a new Madrid fault to split North America into two. The movie is about a team of government agents and seismologists who race to prevent disaster when the fault threatens to cause a catastrophic earthquake. For all the consumers, customers, and clients of the auto repair industry, if you guys have not read up on the CDK global cyber attack, now is the time because this is absolutely insane. When a single shop falls just one day behind in this industry, that tends to affect five to ten customers that are waiting. Uh, that's not looking good. Now let's put into perspective that there are 18,865 franchise dealerships in the United States, and an estimated 15,000 of them are being affected by this. I was talking about this with a couple of buddies, and I decided to start calling around all of my local dealerships in case I needed to get parts within the next couple of days. And every single one of them that I called, except for Honda, either did not answer the phone or said that they were being affected in their parts department by the CDK shutdown. They are unable to sell me any parts. Now, they said they don't know how long this is going to go on. I did see one article from 40 minutes ago saying that the major chunk of it was resolved, but I don't really ever believe PR stuff like that. Let's see how quick this gains pressure. I believe we're dealing with a bad head gasket here. Which means that this guy is not gonna be able to get parts. And this isn't only affecting the parts departments, this is affecting sales, service. I always say that the automotive repair industry is a borderline utility. And this is kind of an example of when a borderline utility shuts down, stuff's gonna get crazy over the next couple days. In our country, and it's not accidental. If you look at the congressional record from January the 10th, 1963, Congressman Herlong of Florida read into the congressional record the 45 goals of communism in America, how they want to fundamentally change us. Do you know why they need to fundamentally change us? Because the United States of America is the major obstacle to one world government. <laughs> why. And they cannot bring us down militarily. So what do you do next? You go inside. You divide the people on the basis of race, age, income, gender, religion, political affiliation. You have them all at each other's throats. You destroy the fabric and the morality of the people. If you read those 45 goals from over 60 years ago, one of them is to gain control of the public schools and the teacher union so you can indoctrinate the kids, gain control of the news media and Hollywood so you can manipulate the opinions of the people, remove God from the public square, go into the churches and change the real gospel for the social gospel. Have you noticed how that's happening in a lot of churches? Instead of laying down the law of God, they got their finger in the air seeing which way the wind is blowing and conforming to that. That's not what the church is supposed to do. But some of the other goals was diminish the role of the family, drive wedges between parents and their children, making the parents seem like the bad people in this whole situation. All of these are things that are happening in our society, and here's the problem. It's working. And you see what's happening to us as we allow those influences to become greater in our lives. And you see people talking about my truth and your truth. Whatever happened to the truth? You know? And Jesus said it, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one coming to the Father but by me. You know, we have to be willing to stand up for what we believe in. And particularly the evangelical and the Christian community. There's a lot of us out there, but we have to be 
more visible. You see, a lot of people, when a conversation starts, instead of talking about what they believe, they stand in the corner and stare at the floor because they don't want somebody to call them a nasty name or to try to cancel them. But, you know, I've had a lot of people try to cancel me. I don't care about those people. I only care about God. God's not going to cancel. And I stated before that I believe that we are heading into a new world. Uh, just by the um, the temperature of things, the articles that I've been reading, the agendas that has been being pushed, the laws that are being um, made, the policies that are changing. Yes, we are definitely headed into a new world. Uh, for example, LGBTQ has been quite popular over the last couple of years. They have their own flag. Uh, laws and policies are changing for LBGTQ. LB, I, I can never get it right. Laws are being changed for that. You can lose your job if you mispronunciate if you give someone the wrong pronouns, you can lose your job for that. I never thought that we'd be living in the time where you could lose your job if you misgender someone. That is crazy. And laws are being made so that if you misgender someone, you may have to pay a fine. Who knows? Okay. So our first topic we're going to get into, um, the United Methodist Church, with this, which is the UMC, elects third openly gay bishop. It's the first since the UMC changed its rules. Now, a regional body of the United Methodist Church has its third openly gay bishop, the first since the uh, mainline Protestant denomination changed its rules to allow non-celibate homosexuals to be ordained. Wow. Wow. That is, that's crazy. That's, that's kind of insane. But again, guys, the rules are starting to change and uh, they expect us to change with it. We're coming to a point and speaking as a trans woman on the panel here, we're getting to a point in society where we have to start to cope with the fact that there have been a lot of excesses with the trans movement. Mm -hmm. It's done a lot of things incorrectly. It has put people off. It's hurt women. It's hurt children. And I think recalibrating is the only way to get to a point where things are actually, you know, not having to, we don't have to worry about women in prisons and in hospital situations. These are things that we've solved long ago. And for whatever reason, it's bubbling back up because of politics. But at the end of the day, when it comes to prison specifically, when it comes to prison specifically, biological men should not be in women's prisons. We have enough incidents here in the U.S. of women getting pregnant, getting raped, because at the end of the day, in a lot of states in the U.S., you don't even have to have reassignment surgery to be in a woman's prison. It's just on your state, though. Well, you know, Blair, think, in, um, in Scotland. And I think is absolutely correct when he says that not only does this damage women and children, mm -hmm. it's also come and it's rebounded and it's damaged trans people. And it's yes. made people look at the community like, what in the world is going on? You, you know, think that trans issue, women athletes should be able to compete against biological women? Yes, I do think that, do. yeah. And you absolutely. see no inconsistency in these positions? I don't really, know right. Because I haven't made a comment he's, on the prison. Because he's, right, scared, he's, he's scared to be... I'm not scared. He's scared, scared to be Honestly, shamed. Like I, I the think... same thing that Blair said. Let me talk. Let me talk. The same yeah. thing that Blair was saying, that people are afraid to be called transphobic and all this stuff. And so are you. I'm not you afraid. won't be honest and tell the truth about the fact that it's absolutely mind-blowingly ridiculous to think that a man with a penis that's impersonating a woman or think he's a woman can be in a women's prison. That's insane. But this is you seem to You is. seem to think it's no disagreement, brother. The man has a penis it's and a he's woman. in a cell with a They're woman. A wo she's a woman. If she, with, with a penis. No, no, no. A woman the, the, is a I believe a trans woman is a problem with society. This is a problem with society. Don't know talk about each other. Let me finish. This is a problem with society. We need to be logical, reasonable, and operate in facts. It is a man that identify as a woman. It's not a woman. It's, it's very simple. Why can't we get that correct? Man, this is no disrespect. I'm getting tired of watching a movie, and I'm thinking, this is about to get, be a good movie. And then when I turn that mother sucker on, just right when it's starting to get good, I see a gay scene in there. And it's like, dog, my kids right here. You know what I'm saying? See, Hollywood need to do a thing where it need to be rated something. Like, you know, you got to rate it all. You got to rate it PG. You know what I'm saying? They need to have something that is rated 
LGBTQ. You know what I'm saying? That way we can know that that's in there so we can avoid that. Like I said, this is no hate towards the rainbow community. Doesn't it just fill you with pride? Showing who you are on the inside. You with that pride flag up high. Be true to you. Show your pride with those flags, everybody. Here we go. Red light, orange, healing, yellow is sun. Light, green, nature, blue, harmony, purple is spirit. Baby blue, pink, white represent transgender people. And black and brown represent the queer and trans. They expect us to change with it. And we do know that God says a man should not lay with a man as he lies with a woman. Uh, the God, God says be fruitful, uh, multiply, and marriage is between a man and a woman, not between a woman and a woman and a man and a man. It's just not godly. It's not holy. I, again, I firmly believe that... Um, the mark of the beast and if you all don't know about the mark of the beast it's in the bible it's in uh, the book of revelations and i do believe that foundations are being set for the mark of the beast for a new world right and if you don't conform to the new world that they're bringing upon the upon us you won't be able to buy or sell you won't be able to participate in this new world so des and i we've did some assessment like okay how can they force you not to participate in this world? Well, it's actually pretty simple. They set up new rules. They get new systems in play. They get a new economic infrastructure in play, right? And if you don't conform to the policies that they laid out for this new infrastructure, you will not be able to participate. So how would they do that? By forming a digital infrastructure. If you all have noticed Everything is going digital, uh, online. Um, they're getting us used to scanning QR codes to get in certain places. They're getting used to us for um, to sign up to shop certain places to get in certain places, to sign up for rewards program. Like, hey, if you sign up for this, uh, we'll give you a couple perks on your next purchase off. Like, everything, everything will go into one system, okay? They're coming up with digital ids they're saying digital ids are more secure how when you have your physical copy of your id in your wallet or your purse or at home wherever you have it you have it you know no one else have it they're saying having a digital photo id will be more secure and safe than having a physical copy that is the narrative that they are pushing now so what's going to happen is it's everything is going to be connected to your digital ID, your bank, right? Your bank, your, your whole digital prototype, everything will be attached to your mobile ID. That is how they will control you. If you go in the store, you may have to scan your digital ID in order to get into the store. If you were to go online, you may have to uh, show your biometrics or your fingerprint or scan your digital ID just to get in line. And that doesn't sound too far fetched because that's what we see in the sci fi movies. Sci fi is nothing but our new reality, right? They pre program us to think, like, oh, that can never happen. It's just movies, just sci fi. But some of our first technology that we've ever received was in sci fi first cell phones. Uh, the holograms, you know, uh, flying cars, airplanes, all of that, all of that stuff used to be in sci-fi first before we ever, uh, saw it physically in our world. So if you watch sci-fi, if you're a fan of sci-fi, that is where we headed. There's going to come a time where we're, we may wake up to get online and we may have to scan our face, scan our fingerprint, scan our uh, mobile ID. Wearable devices. So these are brain sensors uh, that are starting to be embedded in everyday devices, but until now have been a number of niche companies that really have focused on mindfulness and meditation. The use of, for example, brain sensors that can pick up electrical activity in the brain at a pretty low resolution, but advances in AI have both improved what the signal is that can come from the brain um, and enabled the miniaturization uh, of those products. 
as a lot of the major tech companies start to invest um, in these brain sensors, it's a huge, I think, untapped market in many ways of integrating them into everyday devices. These are earbuds or watches or headphones and the soft cups around the ears. Many of those products are hitting the market this year and others are hitting them within the next two years such that people can listen to music, a phone call, et cetera, while having those devices in ears. Initially, what they will be capable of doing is very high level brain state reading. Things like, are you tired? Are you paying attention? Is your mind wandering? Are you happy or sad? Um, they maybe enable interaction like up, down, left, right for interaction with other technologies. And they're being embedded into things like um, visual, uh, virtual reality. The internet was created by the American military in order to manage the American empire. It was created by DARPA in the 1960s in order to digitize and be able to quickly share within the military all of the social science research on foreign populations who were posing insurgency concerns to U.S. managed governments. In 1991, the World Wide Web rolls out. DARPA turns over the internet to the National Science Foundation and projects that through a bunch of universities to make it publicly available for commercial use. As soon as the internet came out, DARPA commissioned a program called Massive Digital Data Systems Program. And the Massive Digital Data Systems Program was a joint project of the NSA and the CIA. Part of this involved tracking search results through the early search engines that were created to be able to navigate this new internet. And this is where Google comes into the picture. In 1995, Larry Page and Sergey Brin are PhD students at Stanford. They had a DARPA grant to do this search engine aggregation work. They would then take this work to form a company called Google in 1998. Google quickly came out with very innovative product sets like Google Maps. They got Google Maps by purchasing the CIA's keyhole satellite software. It was the CIA's spy satellite software that is the only reason Google got Google Maps. You ever wonder what kind of spiritual technology the rich, powerful, and elite organizations work on in secret? Those that have unlimited resources, time, and above the law leeway. Welcome to DARPA, the psychotic invasive branch of the Antichrist. Take two. Top five bizarre spiritual technologies DARPA's working on. And don't worry, I won't mention the robots designed to consume biological material as fuel or nanotech that's woven into clothing that's wash resistant and can either monitor or send frequencies to Take three. Since Project Pandora in the 60s which used microwave radiation to control human behavior, extreme efforts have gone to get inside of the human brain. And they've been working on neurotech which is basically a brain interface with robots. This brain machine interface is the beginning of the cyborg generation or fallen angels in robot bodies like the Transformers type generation. Among other spiritual tech, here's a few more. Check out the Smart Dust, the world's smallest commercially available RFID chip. Been around for at least a decade. Smart Dust. So what is Smart Dust? Well, general purpose computing, sensors, wireless network, networking, all bundled up into millimeter scale sensor modes, drifting in the air currents, flex of computing power settling on your skin, ingested, monitoring you inside and out and can be pulse powered by radio waves. It doesn't require a battery. You can literally scatter this stuff like dust or embed it into a sheet of paper. And you know what the really interesting thing about this technology is? This was commercially released 10 years ago and you haven't really seen anything yet. Or synthetic telepathy, which there's patents for. Sonic projector devices, meaning sound, V2K, which is known as voice to skull. Also, there's the realm of dream advertising, which also has patents and is something that happens. All these Antichrist mind control patents. Take four. CRISPR super soldiers. Genetics technology plus processing and rituals to create invulnerable super soldiers. There's organisms that thrive on radioactivity and there's already been experiments to insert some of these radioactive thriving organism, organisms into humans, as well as animal man hybrid type of science. Various traits include heightened senses and tolerance, gecko like climbing grip, breathing underwater, etc. There's implantable nano biosensors. The idea is having biosensors implanted in the bloodstream to be communicated with from outside of the body or off-site. Using radio and EMF waves, scanning and reading biomarkers, probably monitoring everything. Probably straight on that one. And there's also the Avatar Project, which is basically uploading your consciousness. The alleged DARPA Avatar Project, a sentient world simulation run through a series of high-powered quantum computers. It has a digital twin of you inside of this quantum computer simulation. All for entertainment purposes, by the way. This is technology that can read thoughts in real time and feed them into the digital twin inside of the sim. 
to predict your behavior and see it beforehand, as well as outcomes in the entire world. And also through the principle of quantum entanglement, they can also probably use it to put stuff in your mind. And don't worry, these are just a few. I didn't even mention shape-shifting programmable matter, flying boats, bullets that can be adjusted after being shot, digital tattoos, and visibility tech. If you think all this is crazy, this is only what they've admitted to. Hence the speculation at the intro, what's being done in secret. In close, it's always been about getting inside of the human body, inside of the human brain. That's what it's always all been about. The fusing of these fallen beings taking over humanity. DARPA with the Brain Initiative, Neurotech, Neuralink Science that Elon Musk is working on and a slew of other agencies besides just DARPA. You see what time it is. If you research into it, you'll see that DARPA and CERN are both connected to the origin of the internet and also where this technology comes from and how humanity is being baited and led into these scenarios. Into the end game where it's leading us all. The full-fledged matrix. Been the plan this whole time, the computer, this big box shrunk down to the phone was always meant to go inside of your body. Think mark of the beast. And hey, they don't call it the battlefield of the mind for no reason. This is DICE digital curated experience. It is a personal mobility that will be utilized as a hailing mobility, such as Uber. You would have an app call it to you. It's fully AI, robotics driving technology, and powered by hydrogen fuel cell technology. You would board the vehicle, put your phone into the armrest. From there, the onboard AI will connect with your phone. It'll data mine and go through text, uh, text messages, email, social media, web browsing history, schedule, and it'll create a digitally immersive experience personalized to you. All three windows are actual digital screens. Once it personalizes to you, it'll make the presumption if you are a businessman, it becomes a mobile office. If you're a child who enjoys video games, an immersive video game environment. The AI service agent ideally would make preemptive decisions for you based upon your points of interest. Drive by some shops that you would normally uh, per make purchases at. It can turn into an online e-commerce platform to make purchases directly from Dice. This is mind blowing. How many people heard about the black artificial intelligent robot Ukraine just made? My name is Victoria Shi. I have been created by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine using artificial intelligence to provide you with timely and high quality information on consular affairs. I am a digital person. That means that the text you hear was not- For All the people that still believe that this might be a real woman, meet Victoria Shi. Ukraine Foreign Minister AI Spokewoman. I don't know if I should say she or it or what, but the world first AI diplomat. We all know Ukraine is super racist. So why would they make their first AI a black woman? I need you to pay attention to her or its name, Victoria. Victoria comes from the word victory. Are they selling? is the AI pin, and it was showcased recently at Coperni's 2024 Spring Summer Show at Paris Fashion Week. And this is it in action. It's a new kind of wearable device that, and platform that's built entirely from the ground up for artificial intelligence. You don't need a smartphone or any other device to pair with it. In fact, I'm wearing one right now. Sorry. This is my wife. I'm gonna have to get this. Hello? Hey it's even harder when we don't speak the language, right? Let me show you something. Invisible devices should feel so natural to use that you almost forget about their existence. Des appareils invisibles devraient sembler si naturels à utiliser. Well, if you're a conspiracy theorist, this upcoming iOS 18 update might not be for you. And it needs to be talked about immediately because how is nobody questioning this? I swear humans are so easily entertained, it's actually scary. First of all, let's start off with the fact that while it might seem cool, your front facing camera will allow you to use your device with your eyes. Yes, your eyes, literally tracking them as they move. While this might seem cool for users with physical disabilities, you are literally capable, like it says here, of navigating through the elements of an app and use dwell control to activate each element, accessing additional functions such as physical buttons, swipes, and other gestures solely with their eyes. I think we're getting a little bit too advanced here, people. And if that's not sketchy, you will literally be able to lock any app. Yes, lock your apps and even hide them as well. So say goodbye to monogamy, ladies and gentlemen. But the biggest one yet is the fact that Siri is getting an extreme AI update, which will allow it to quite literally have access to everything in your phone, including your location, your text messages, see every single photo on your device as well, and even pick out via voice command, 
a specific photo you have throughout your entire album to its most precise wording such as asking Siri to find a specific photo from years ago with a specific individual. The good thing is the fact that right now, AI capabilities as we know will only be available on the iPhone 15 Pro, which I'm guessing people wouldn't want after hearing what's coming. I've seen the show The 100 and the movie Terminator, so I'm good, wink wink. But if this is for you, then so be it, go for it. After looking into Senate Bill 1409, I don't really know. Go ahead and do yourself a favor and go look into Senate Bill 1409. Then things get really interesting. Amazon has now deployed 750,000 robots to replace over 100,000 human workers. Today, Amazon launches Sequoia, its brand new robotic system in Houston. The company says it's capable of stocking merchandise 75% more quickly and delivering your orders 25% faster. They're able to bring these totes from the warehouse to a workstation like this. And just how do those towers move around? Meet Hercules. Today is graduation day. The finished robots form a line and drive themselves onto their own shipping pallets where they'll head off to work at fulfillment centers around the world. Amazon has now deployed 750,000 robots to replace over 100,000 human workers. The government estimates that 85 million jobs will be lost due to artificial intelligence by 2025. This decision from Amazon has garnered controversy online. A massive outage by a cybersecurity company has crashed banks, airlines, and 911 all across the world right now. So CrowdStrike, which is a cybersecurity company, is currently facing an outage, and a ton of people in the corporate space are having their Windows computers look like this with the blue screen of death. Even major news corporations are not even able to do the morning news because their displays in the back are not working. Not only banks and 911 just across America here, but United Airlines, American Airlines, and Delta have all had their computer systems crash and have reached out to the FAA to order ground stops across the entire country. Meaning if you're supposed to be getting on a flight this morning with Delta, United, or American, right now you're probably not getting on that flight. Also, the entire country of Berlin just canceled every single flight out of their country because of these computer outages and emergency services, Amazon, Gmail, and a a widespread IT issue has caused this to happen and this just happened in the last 20 minutes. So again, if you or anyone you know was supposed to take a flight today or you're getting some sort of issue with your computer, this is why. You put that chip in your brain and you watch. And I'll tell you right now, he is, he is evil embodied. Nobody wants to put a chip in somebody else's brain unless if they're evil and sadistic. And I'll say it right to his face. I'm not scared of him and I die right now. I don't care. There's nothing he can do to scare me. And I'm not scared to tell people what I believe because I'm telling you, if you get that chip in your brain from Elon Musk, you've been fooled. Just because the chip is the one that makes you uncomfortable. When you type type in Neuralink and Greek Beta Germatra, you get the numerical okay. value of 666. Can you type that in? Greek. Now, Germatra, apparently, I don't know a bunch of stuff. I'm not that well versed in my history, but Germatra is when they give words or letters and numerical value. When you type in Neuralink and Greek Beta Germatra, 666 that's why i believe it okay so did you where did you read that did Remember, you read that online or i typed it in myself i went to the to the greek beta gematra calculator and i typed in the word neuralink and it's numerical value in greek beta gematra is 666 so i'm going to give a quick biometric update of things that's going on that's including biometrics with digital and i'm noticing how this is a world agenda it's not just one continent one state one country that wants to go digital right it's not just one sector that just wants individuals to have a mobile id a mobile bank mobile online scan to get in stores digital money smart cities smart cities is where Everything you do will be surveillance. Everything will be watched. It's not just one sector or one place that's doing that. It is a world agenda that everyone gets on world on one accord, right? That to me, that's one world religion, one world government. If everyone's getting on the same accord. So let's go down a list of these uh, biometrics that's happening again. Feel free, you all, to do your own research. That is what it's for. So Asian banks deploy biometrics and digital ID for security and additional services. So let's tap into this. This seems like a really cool topic. 
So South Korean banks introduced digital ID to connect private public sectors. So commercial banks in the Republic of Korea will introduce digital ID cards on their mobile apps within the year, according to a report in the Korea Times. The move will allow KB Kukmin Bank, NH Nong Hyup Bank, and a consortium of Keiko and its banking arm, Keiko Bank, to offer mobile ID that enables them to expand services to non-banking sectors. For one, I I think about why would they have to connect a bank to your digital ID? Why would they have to do that? That is scary. If you all remember a couple of years ago when uh, there was the truckers protest out in Canada. The individuals that were protesting in Canada the truckers that were protesting, you know they start canceling their IDs. They suspended them. They made it to where the truckers that were protesting that they couldn't get home loans, bank loans. It's like they were trying to ostracize them from the world. Like they couldn't, like not allowing them to be able to survive, to get the stuff that they need, that you would need to survive, right? So when I think about a digital ID and having a bank connected to it and these stores that are starting to go smart and digital as well, I always divert to back to that because they can literally shut off our whole life with just a press of a button. They can freeze our bank account. They can say, oh, you use too much water this month, too much electric this month, too much air this month, or you use, you're using too much. What is that? Um, you're using too much, uh, I forget what the name is, but anyway, using too much fuel, gas, right? Okay, we're going to um, take some of your money away today. Like, it's just so, because you know they have a universal basic income, right? To where they will give you money monthly. They're testing pilots out now. If you look up universal basic income, it's where they will give you free money. Now, when is the government just going to give anybody anything for free and say, hey, here, do what you want with it? No, it's just testing pilots. So once you have your digital bank, your digital mobile ID, your universal basic income, you, they may give you a certain set of money a month. But if you don't do what they say, if you don't act accordingly to the laws and the policies that's being passed around, maybe you have misgender someone. Uh, again, maybe you use too much water, too much electric for the month, uh, maybe you've you've gotten a speeding ticket or anything. They'll just deduct it from your month your uh, monthly account. And if you keep on breaking the rules, they may freeze your banking account. They may make it to where you can't get a home loan. They may make it to where you can't get on the internet. They may make it to where you can't even uh, maybe come out of your house or come out of your city because now they're making it to where you can have digital passports and smart cities, right? Smart cities where everything in that city will be smart. You will have the LED lights. You will have the smart tollways. As a matter of fact, in New York, they're starting to put smart tollways um, in Manhattan, downtown Manhattan. So these things are being slowly popping up around the world in the big cities first, right? And they're doing it slowly so you can get used to seeing it so you can grow to accept it. And then they'll keep adding more and more on. And before you know it, you would be in a smart city. Before you know it, you will have a digital ID. Before you know it, you will have a digital mobile banking connected to your ID. And think about it. We want to check our banking account now. What do we do? We already go on the app already. So they already pre-programmed us to get us used to dig to banking mobile, right? So pretty soon they're just going to combine it with our ID. Pretty soon they're going to combine everything with our whole lives. Our whole life will be uh, available on a, a digital chip. We'll have a we'll have a digital profile. So. Again, that's something to take heed to. Also, Vietnam mandates facial recognition for large bank transfers. Now, uh, that seems that seems ideally that seems like, oh, okay, yeah, you should want to make facial recognition for large bank transfers. But no, that's just so you can accept it. So you can say, no, if you are making a large bank transfer, you should be able to scan your face first. So once they get the people that are making 
the big digital bank transfers to be able to scan your face, it'll be a piece of cake for us who who uh, who are not transferring that much money, who are not making that much money, transfer uh, to um, use our facial recognition, right? Because you have to test it out on uh, a group of people first to see how the process runs. You have to test it out first. You have to have a pilot to see how it goes, to see what do you need to fix? What do you need to keep? What do you need to throw out? Let's keep going. National digital ID improves efficiency inclusion in the Philippines. So in the Philippines, they're doing the same thing. They're, they're test pilot, piloting out the digital ID, which is important because once you're able to get everyone to get a digital ID, now you have everyone where you want them. Now you have everyone in a system, in a computer. And why do you think they are putting all this money, all this investment into AI? They're also getting us used to AI, to chat GPT, to making AI uh, faces and all everything. It's all computerized. It's all digital. This is where we are heading. Again, if you speak out against something. Like I'm speaking out now, I can do this freely now, but who knows what'll happen in the next year or two. They can just shut off my digital profile. They can stop me from getting on the internet, stop me from working, stop me from being able to access my bank, stop me from being able to buy a home, stop me from being able to go into a grocery store, stop me from being able to drive in my car if I have an electric vehicle, right? Because they want all vehicles to go electric. So you know what happens with an electric vehicle? They can stop it. They can hack into that. When the power went out, when it got uh, cold for like a day or two, um, they showed, uh, it was in Chicago, there was a clip where they had like Teslas lined up because it took like 13 to 14 hours just to charge up a Tesla and then it kept going out. So just because I know electric vehicles uh, seem cool, they look cool, but there's a lot that go into these electric vehicles. You're, you're not going to be able to drive very far with the electric vehicle. There's only so far you can go with the electric vehicle because you're going to have to keep charging that battery up. And what if, um, <clears throat> what if you can't charge a battery up? And how much would it charge? How much is it going to cost to charge up that battery? So yeah, it's just again. So let's keep going down. Let's keep going down. Wyoming plots mobile driver's license launch for 2025. The EU publishes rollout schedule for the AI Act. The World Bank identifies priority actions for DPI in in Equatorial Guinea. So that's just a that's just a quick update on again certain places that are going not certain places a lot of places around the world that are converting to digital ID on airports already. You can see those effects happening in an airport, right? Facial recognition, the facial scanning. Some airports are now accepting uh, mobile IDs, the digital ID app. Yeah, it's already happening. I'm already seeing in some DMVs where um, you have to schedule your appointment online now. Some hospitals, uh, well, uh, some healthcare places, uh, you go in and um, you type your information in a computer and uh, you just sit in the waiting room and then somebody will be out. You know, you're not even greeted by a uh, receptionist anymore. And uh, a lot of these grocery stores, they, they are starting to have robots. Self-checkout. So I know it may seem like we're getting an upgrade, like, oh, it seems cool. We're getting an upgrade. We're gonna have self-driving cars, self-checkout. No, guys. There is a new system being laid out right before our eyes. And we think it looks cool because we think we're we're living in a futuristic city. That's how they're putting it towards us. So anyway, let's get to this. Now, this is something that we've touched on in our show before, but I thought it was um, I thought it was great that we bring it back, that we touch on it. That we touch on it a little bit more. Because um, a couple months ago on the show, we talked about a giant AI statue 
that is going to travel around the world to 21 cities and be displayed. Not only that, but there's also a giant, a giant AI statue coming to museums. So this, again, they're not investing all of this money just so you could say, hey, here's a cool AI. Come take a selfie in front of it. You think they're going to be in, investing millions and billions of dollars into an AI system that you have to put so much electric and data into uh, all types of stuff to make this AI function the way they want to function. You think they are just building the world's tallest AI statue, having it travel around the world, having it travel around from city to city, putting it in museums just so you can take a selfie in front of it. No, they're going to be displaying the new God. I know it sounds far fetched, but no, they're going to be displaying the new world. They are going to be displaying like, hey, this is what time it is. If you are not conforming to our rules, you will be left out. You won't be able to participate. Why else would they showcase a giant AI statue and take it around the world? So let's tap into this. If you all would like to look into this, um, it's the website is the giant company dot I E the giant company dot I E. So they're going to have three giant AI statues. So the first one is going to be the permanent giant. Now the giant visitor attraction is a standalone attraction featuring a 40 to 60 meter tall giant statue uh, situated on top of a, a bespoke building. So they want this to be real. They're going to sit this on top of a building. Let's click. Let's learn a little bit more about it. It says the giant will be one of the world's most ambitious cultural and commercial projects, bringing together art, amusement, and wonder to create a contemporary and highly profitable business. It says right now we are on the search to find 21 of the best cities to host their giant. And that's coming from the CEO, Patty, the world's tallest moving statue, the world's most unique billboard the world's most awesome selfie the instantly transform into any image it's going to sing recite poetry and inspired ideas they even say you can view the city from the shoulders of a giant high-tech museum and exhibits for all ages wow this is going to be a wonder to see guys they're trying to wow you they're trying to make you accept this like, wow, this is going to be the most coolest thing we've ever seen. But question, why would they, why are they bringing this? Why are they traveling it around the world? And why are they bringing it? Um, why is it going to be able to transform into anything to anybody? Why is it going to be able to recite songs and poetry and do wonders? Why is it doing all of this? And we use AI all, we, go, we already use AI. A lot of people are so comfortable with AI. They, hey, AI, tell me more about this. AI, like we use it like we use Google. So we're going to be comfortable with going to the AI because they put it out there just so you can use it and get used to using it, right? So now they can introduce the God. Now they can introduce AI acts and laws. They, there are AI acts and laws being released and made right now. They say there's going to be three iterations of the giant. So we already talked about the permanent giant. Now, this will be the touring giant. It's going to promote and enhance tourism. They say it's going to increase footfall in the vicinity. It's going to promote economic stimulus and job creation. How? How is, how is, how is that going to do that? It says it's going to be an iconic landmark for the city. Presents advertisers and sponsors with a spectacular new format and opportunity for reaching the public. Mm, I guess that's cool. Amazing backdrop for festival celebrations and events. Touring giants, enhanced expos, sporting events, concerts, fairs. Why would you need a giant AI to do that? Promotes environmental sustainability, ethical business practice, and operations. Wow. 
all this with this AI giant. That's miraculous. Uh, let's go to number three. So, so far we went through the permanent giant number one, the touring giant number two. And let's see what the indoor giant is going to do. Yeah. So this giant is going to be in museums. They're going to have one in New Jersey. Going to be in a museum. And guess what? In order to get into the museum to be able to see the giant... You're going to have to scan, show facial recognition. It's going to be all digitalized. And I said this on the previous show, and I'm going to say it again. I believe the exhibit at this museum is like a dry run of what the world is going to be like, right? It's going to, so if you go to this exhibit, if you go to this museum, if you have to scan and get in, if you have to scan your eyes, scan your fingerprint, right? If you have to use digital money to buy something from the AI giant to anything, this is going to be a dry run of what the world is going to be like and what they're trying to get the world on one accord to do. It's why they're making laws for it. If this AI is just an art exhibit, why would you need to make laws and policies for it around the world? Why would, you know, why, why are we going to have, have to have mobile and, and digital IDs? Mobile banking. To get on some websites already, it's a it's a paywall just to get on certain websites now. They, they can stop certain people from getting on the internet. It's just I don't think people know how crucial this is. It enabled and so this system is all being put into play. So if you don't become part of the digital system, the new system that Satan is laying down, you won't be able to participate in the world right? Because the world is going to become digital and you won't be able to be in it if you're not getting that mark. If you're not getting that chip in your head or your forehead or a mark, if you're not getting that, you won't be able to anticipate. So guys, um, I hope you all enjoyed the clips. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this segment. And again, this is just a shed light on things that's going on around the world. Uh, keep your eyes open. Um, again, get in tune with the Lord. Uh, try to read his word. Pray to him. Pray for leadance, for leader, for leadership, guidance, protection. Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Pray for the poor, the needy, the children, the less fortunate, the, the Christians that's being persecuted. Pray for those individuals. And for the Christians, keep up the fight. It's a spiritual battle. We're not dealing with flesh. We're, de we're dealing with spiritual entities. Principalities is what the Bible says that we're dealing with. And these demonic entities, according to the Bible, are in high places. They are the ones that's putting all this into motion. They, they spiritually attack us as well. They come to us in our dreams. like they, they tempt us on all angles. So Christians out here, keep up the fight. Keep praying. Keep staying in the word. Whenever you feel yourself uh, becoming depressed or you feel something coming upon you that isn't right, pray to the Lord. Ask him to aid you and protect you and plead the blood of Jesus over your body, mind, and spirit, including your family, friends. I hope you all enjoyed this segment. Again, I'm your humble host, and a follower of Jesus Christ, Myra B. King. May grace, peace, and love be upon you and your family. You need to understand, religion and government will amalgamate. They will come together, they will merge as one. And then the government will want worship for itself, so it will destroy the religious system and make a governmental religious system. You can call it communism or whatever you want to call it, but that's what it's going to be, where the government will be worshipped. And this man who's running the governmental system called the Antichrist, he's called Antichrist because he makes himself out to be Christ. He'll be killed and come back to life. The religious system will make an image of this man. And the image will come to life. It's crazy, the things that we see. Because after all the great judgment has happened, it says after these things, after the seven-year tribulation, after the perilous times that came upon the earth, after the Antichrist set up his place in Jerusalem, signed the peace treaty, broke the peace treaty, brought forth um, um, great persecution on the people of God. After he set up a system where everyone around the world had to, in order to buy or sell, accept his mark. 
And God at that time had 144,000 Jewish men who were going out and witnessing and preaching the gospel and people were getting saved and as they were getting saved, the government was killing them. They were coming after them and, and taking their lives because they were worshiping Jesus Christ. Goes back to what Jesus said that they would, if they persecuted me, they'll persecute you also because the servant cannot be any better than the master. And that makes me think in this modern era, how is it that when we look at church history, the only time the church grew was in persecution. And we're sitting in luxury and we're believing the church is growing because we're seeing people coming into buildings not understanding that that's the sign of the end time. They will accumulate unto themselves, teach us in accordance with their own desires. How do you know that this is the last days when the churches are so large but people are spiritually dead? When the folks sitting down in the church don't know what holiness means, have no idea what it means to be church or who Jesus Christ truly is, but they truly have a religion, oh. See, that is what's going to be taking place and we're seeing it being set up now. This false religion is going to come up and folks in the church will persecute people in the church because there will be the wheat among the tares and the tares will try to tear down the wheat. And it shows Jesus when he gave the parable of the tares and the wheat showed that the evil one came in and planted the tares among the wheat. So when you see folks in church today, any church that you hear, Jesus is not being elevated and the gospel is not the center, you know that, that is not a true church doesn't matter how charismatic the man is who's speaking it doesn't matter how many people are attending that has no bearing on the fact if Jesus Christ is not being proclaimed it is not a church and I'm not speaking about the Jesus folks speaking about that pacified Jesus who run around with a rainbow and people saying that you know he just love everyone and all their sin and all their filth and make him out to be this strange where twisted American thing no I'm speaking of the Jesus who always was. He has no beginning. He has no end. He is Alpha. He is Omega. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God. This Jesus who literally, who created Mary, went into her womb, came out of her womb, went to a tomb so, she could, so He could save His mother, who He created. So we need to understand the Jesus who I'm speaking of isn't the Jesus who people serve today. Most people have a Jesus that was made by Hollywood. This is a Jesus who, he says, he accepts you as you are. Now mind you, some truth wrapped up in a lie is still a lie.